independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Defying the president is attacking you on Twitter. Um, and I'd like to give you a chance to respond. I'll read part of one of his tweets. Everywhere Marie Ivanovich went turned bad. She started off in Somalia. How did that go? Uh, he goes on to say uh, later in the tweet, is a U.S. president's absolute right to appoint ambassadors? Uh, Adam Schiff, who I'm not a fan of. And I will say this, right? To get your point across, Adam, I'm going to call you Adam, right? Because you, you've earned that. <laughs> you, she didn't know about the tweet until you told her, right? By the way, somebody in his campaign, his remaining nameless, came out and said that was not a good tweet. Right? Talking about her, kind of yeah, the this, this stuff that he did. But you, you did. I mean, this is this is this is the theater of it all. You broke it down in the middle of what's supposed to be this mega hearing, right? Like this is this is huge. This is one of your you have four big witnesses that we know of. And I'll talk about that we know of a little bit in a little bit. But you have four witnesses, right? Yet two of them already go. Kent, not so much, but he did. Uh, he helped both sides. Bill Taylor, very credible. Uh, I, and by help, I think they're just telling the truth. Now, whether it's their version of the truth or the truth, I think they're just giving their accounts of things, and you can go from there. And she was the former ambassador so she's going through this rigor more and then he has to stop down and said hey hold on he's tweeting about you let me tell you what he said i will say this i think she was very credible <laughs> i do not think she destroyed somali all right i'm just gonna go out there on a limb i saw somebody today says yeah it was like a tweet about yeah she did she's been like look at look at those places i'm like you guys are aware right like all of you are aware that she wasn't Black Hawk down, right? Like, she wasn't in Mogadishu. She didn't know. No, no. You guys, are, you get that. But he does what he does because Schiff is shifty. He is dip shift for a reason. We call him that. And he played this game because it's theatrics. And a lot of people saw that today. Ambassador, um, you've shown the courage to come forward today and testify. Notwithstanding the fact you were urged by the White House or State Department not to, notwithstanding the fact that, as you testified earlier, the president implicitly threatened you in that call record. And now the president in real time is attacking you. What effect do you think that has on other witnesses' willingness to come forward and expose wrongdoing? Well, uh, it's very intimidating. It's a dine- designed to intimidate, is it not? I-, I mean, I can't speak to what the president is trying to do, but I think the effect is to be intimidating. Well, I want to let you know, Ambassador, that some of us here take witness intimidation very, very seriously. Yeah, sure you do. By the way, there's another aide that was, <laughs> there's another aide that's speaking that witnessed one of the phone calls, and I guess he's uh, Gordon Sondland, who's going to speak next week. Aide, he's the EU ambassador, and he heard Sondland tell the president, <laughs> "This is great. The Ukrainian president loves your ass." <laughs> Oh, Lord. You can't make this stuff up, right? Here's one thing I know out of three of these. Remember, there's only been two days, but there's been three people that have spoken. Trump has a a problem, and his big problem is a little guy in Rudy Giuliani. Ambassador Yovanovitch did not just piss off corrupt Ukrainians, like the corrupt former prosecutor general Yuri Lutsenko, but also... Certain Americans, like Rudy Giuliani, Donald Trump's personal attorney, and two individuals now indicted who worked with him. Yeah, and that that right there is the two. First of all, Wall Street Journal today. So remember what Giuliani's doing. So they're running around over there, right, like, you know, just playing pseudo-wacky spy, trying to dig up dirt. All of this stuff is going on. And, and, and how are we digging up dirt? Well, we're talking about Burisma, right? Burisma's bad. Burisma's bad. Look what happened here. You know, first of all, every little itty bitty tiny person who pushes a cart on the side of the street in the Ukraine is running some sort of hustle, right? If you ain't hustling, you ain't working. 
That's probably not the way they sound. So, we get it. Right? Barista's bad. So, Rudy Giuliani's running around, you know, $83,000 a month to Hunter Biden. All this stuff. Da, 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 da. It, and, and even though we can show that, that the whole thing with, with Biden, that the way that he, he plays it out and talks tough at some sort of Bloomberg, you know, breakfast meeting thing as they're sitting around paying him 50 grand to sit in the seat and, and talk about stuff. Understanding that the guy that they were talking about was fired months after Biden, quote, quote, gave the order. And that the Republicans, along with others in the Western world, wanted that guy gone, right? That prosecutor gone. All of that happening, I think it's a fair question to ask something about Biden. What's Rudy Giuliani doing? He's trying to cut a deal with his buddies, Furman and Lev Parnas. For a natural gas deal into Poland. What do they have to do with it? I don't know about those two guys, but last time I checked, you were the mayor of the world, remember? You're not a natural gas guy. As, as, As sleazy as it looks with your former energy secretary, Rick Perry, cutting deals or having his people who support him and gave money to him cut deals in the Ukraine for natural gas, at least... They're oil and natural gas people. <laughs> so it's not without the realm of possibilities think, well, at least they know what they're doing. But he's got a Rudy problem. And it ain't Rudy Tootie Fresh and Fruity. It is one of those two guys that people aren't talking about are telling you that they're they're gonna be a problem they're gonna be a problem big time they're gonna be a problem now with all that going on today right so all of that going on then you got his former advisor a guy that has been nothing but a loyalist to him on trial we've had him on the show a few times Roger Stone, in court today to hear his fate. The jury convicted Roger Stone of all seven federal charges he faced, including obstruction, making false statements, and witness tampering. Stone, a self-described dirty trickster, had been accused of being the conduit between the Trump campaign and WikiLeaks during the 2016 election. His relationship with the president goes back decades, and his trial put a spotlight on the campaign's eagerness to obtain information about hacked Democratic emails damaging to Hillary Clinton. Yes. Trump has a lot of people that are around him that go to jail. Now, Roger Stone's going to jail because of what Roger Stone did, but don't tell me that that's not an uncomfortable look. Secondly, vitally important, most of the other people that have gone to jail were guilt by association, not because they did anything to help Trump, but because they'd helped themselves along the way, in many cases, long before they started working with Trump, or before they even knew Trump, and they did things like tax evasion and stuff like that that caused serious problems for them legally. It's saying that there's a lot of people. That's why I was joking about earlier. It's like, yeah, there's a lot of people there, and then you look at the other side, you look at the like the Clintons. There's a lot of people, right? I have a lot of friends. I know a lot of people, as do most of you, right? I have never, ever ever in my life seen two people who've had so much tragedy they got so much tragedy that the kennedy's like i feel bad for them because their friends seem to die in just the weirdest ways three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at chad benson show is your twitter you can tweet at us now the whole thought process is what happens with roger stone he faces Potentially 50 years. One of the witnesses uh, feels, who is like their star witness, he says he feels distraught by the whole thing. And, you know, it's ugly. Look, we've had him on a couple times. He's been nothing but cordial. Is he a blowhard and does he deserve to go to jail uh, forever? No. But the reality is, is he's going to do some time. How much time? I don't know. And he's probably, you know, mm, 
Is there maybe something, something at the end for him? It was a pretty easy case for prosecutors to prove that he was lying, that he was trying to obstruct, that he was trying to interfere with a witness testifying. And it seems that they had just kind of hoped that maybe they'd get one juror and they could hang the jury. And now you have to believe that based on the lack of defense he presented, based on the type of defense he presented, based on the fact that he didn't enter into any kind of plea deal, et cetera, that he's hoping for a pardon. I don't know if Trump's going to do that. Now, if Trump was going to be blown out across the board and it looked ugly, would Trump do something like that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't think Trump's going anywhere uh, unless next year they vote him out because I still don't think that they've done enough to 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 to, to move the needle in the American America's eye. And, you know, the other day, so you had a whole day of testimony on what wednesday how many people tuned in about 13 million people total tuned in 13 million 365 million people 13 million tuned in so think about that for a second that's that's not a lot when you when you think about it and how many of those people had already made up their mind a lot a lot of people and that's one of the reasons maybe why more people aren't watching is because their mind is already made up. But has any of this moved anybody? No. No. Not no. Now, does it mean that I think Trump is 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 guilt free? Hell no. Do I think he knew what was going on? Absolutely. Do I think there was a, a, a quid pro quo? He may not have directed it as is on the phone. But again, I keep saying it's along the way. That there were issues. But does it mean you're going to prove it? No. Somebody said today, well, it might have to be circumstantial evidence. It's not going to get it done, kids. It's not. Right? You want to convict somebody of murder, but you don't have a body. Right? You may think you have a motive. But the plausible deniability and the fact that your witness is, eh, no. He ain't going anywhere anytime soon. Doesn't mean that there isn't some surprise out there. And I'm telling you, those two guys that work with uh, Giuliani. Those are the ones I'm looking at. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. We're going to talk here in a little bit about Rodney Reed. And if you don't know who he is, he was supposed to be executed next week. The story is very interesting. What took place? Because now there's been new developments in it, and this has been something that is gaining traction. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. AMAC, Association of Mature American Citizens. Organization that's been nothing but great to me with all of their benefits. More and more people that have tried it said, look, you know what? Their benefits are amazing. And it's on top of that, it's the things they're doing. They're fighting for, you know, they're worried about the Second Amendment and the fact that people are coming hard for the Second Amendment. They're worried about the, the decriminalizing of the borders. They want common sense immigration reform. It's about legal immigration. And on top of that, they look at Social Security and say, is it going to be solvent for you? They're fighting for you in D.C., and they're giving you tons of benefits from retail, restaurant, hotel discounts, and so much more. Join today. It doesn't cost you a penny. They're fighting the good fight for you and the benefits. Well, you're going to love them. Right now, it's one year free, and it's on me. Go to amac.us forward slash chad. That's amac.us forward slash chad. Or call 888-355-1617, 888-355-1617. One year free on me, amac.us forward slash Chad, Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show, where we reach across the aisle and occasionally poke someone in the eye. Boing. We were texting in. Why are you so mean to Rudy? I'm not. I'm not mean to Rudy, right? I just, uh, I'm sorry. He's got some serious issues. Those are some nefarious characters he's hanging out with. And his name is coming up over and over and over again. Now, could it be possible that Rudy Giuliani is trying to impress His pal, Donald Trump, and he's running around saying, let me handle these things. And on the sly, he's doing certain things for for him. It it is possible that that Trump doesn't know about. Absolutely, that is possible. 
Do I think that's likely? No. I don't think that's likely. So I think this is a situation where, you know what? There's a lot of moving parts. It's kind of ugly. It's not a good look for the United States. It isn't a good look for our president. But even if it rose to the point, and I want to hear everything and everybody have their moment in the sun, even if it rose to the point where it's possible that, yeah, you know what, he could not only be impeached, he could be removed. Do I think that will happen? I do not think that will happen. I just don't. Because I think most of the people who've made up their mind, it's so large that everybody's made up their minds, they pick their sides, they're there, they've been there from day one, that leaves a very small amount of people that could sway. And there's not enough of the critical mass of people to sway the Republicans in the Senate to jump ship. You're going to need a massive amount of people. You're going to need, because he's got, what, like a 40% approval rating, give or take. That's kind of what his base is, 38 to 42 in and there. We'll just round it and say it's 42. I mean, 40. You're not going to get 20% of those to leave. You're going to need that plus independence to jump over to where it's 65, 70% of America wants Trump gone. We ain't getting there. And until they feel like they could lose their position and their job, and their fiefdom, and their comfy lives, if they don't vote him to, 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 to convict him and to remove him for office, it ain't happening. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. A lot of stuff to talk about. Yesterday's shooting, as well as Rodney Reed. Who is he? Well, we'll discuss it straight ahead. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Uh, even after we exonerate and bring my brother home, we will always be activists. We will all be standing on the side of the people, on the side of justice, on the side of right and truth. Rodney Reed is scheduled to be executed by the state of Texas next Wednesday, but a growing chorus of people are calling on Governor Greg Abbott to step in and save the life of a man who many believe may be innocent. I think at least the governor has to... Uh pause and look at the two million people who have signed a petition that's two million voices saying listen to us something's off here something needs to be done yeah and it happened now if you don't know who he is uh rodney reed was convicted of killing a 19 year old woman who was white he's black she was white stacy stites it's happened November 20th, 1996. He's 51 now. She was 19 at the time. He was obviously much younger. And he was going to be sentenced to death. Evidence has been popping up that, no, no, this guy. First and foremost, she, White, her fiancé, a former police officer, Jimmy uh, Fennell, This is where it started to get weird. So he was having an affair with her. So you got a black guy and a white girl. And they were having an affair. He's a white cop. Her body's found in a rural area on a road. DNA found inside of her matched him. Obviously, they said one and one together. It's this. This guy's a cop. He would never do anything like that. 
cops said, hey, at the funeral, she's in the casket in white. They hear him say, Jim, the, the, the then officer Jimmy Fennell, you got what you deserved. His former prison inmate pal. Yeah, because you see Jimmy Fennell in 2008, the guy that, you know, was the cop, didn't do anything. He kidnapped a woman and raped her. He just got out of jail. His former prison pal said, yeah, he told me he killed her. He killed her because she was with a black guy. More and more people have been saying, this just feels ugly. People like other politicians, including Ted Cruz and many other, have said, hey. So today, they said, you know what, we're going to give him 120 days. But the governor had to say yay or nay, and the governor has said, yeah, let's let's take a look in into this, because there is just a lot here that we need to unpack. So they're going to potentially, their whole thing is they would like to have another trial. But I think this is a good thing because, and here's the thing, this is one of those tough things too when you look at a situation where, well, okay, you know, because it's always about DNA. Okay, DNA. Because that's what everybody says. Well, she and she knew him, if you will. So DNA was found in saying that there's a lot of other stuff that goes into it, and you know there were, there's no murder weapon. There's no so there's a lot of different things that go into this, and I think this was the right thing to do. And you know, again, not just celebrities were coming forward, but many other people in the in, in including former police officers who work with the other guy, they were coming forward and saying, "You guys got to take another look at this," and I'm glad they are. You know, with DNA, you can do a lot, but there will be times when, you know, you've met somebody, you know somebody, you you may have had an affair, you may have been lovers, whatever, and you may not have done something, so there's that possibility as well. But there's no doubt, as many people are saying in this small town, that race played a huge part in this. And I think uh, stepping back and saying, let's give somebody a chance here to sort some stuff out and really take a look much deeper on both sides is probably the best thing to do. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. Somebody who was found guilty uh, because uh, we have the footage. If you guys didn't see it last night, end of the football game, right? Hood, 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 hood. It's not a great game, right? The Browns been a huge disappointment this year. And so you've got the Browns taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers, their rivals, AFC rivals. It wasn't a pretty game. It was physical, to say the least. A couple Browns, one Brown was ejected. Uh, and it just was, there was a lot of ugliness inside of the game. Some cheap shots, things of that nature. 21-7, end of the game, finishing up. Mason Rudolph, quarterback of the Pittsburgh Steelers, who his... He, he had a concussion about a month ago that was f- just brutal. He was out cold. He got hit twice, going one direction, another direction. Groom, they sandwiched him. He's out cold. And the hardest hit was when his limp body hit the ground, and then he kind of went rigor mortis. So he's already, got, he's already had one bad concussion. And then it just got ugly. And he takes the snap with 14 seconds to go, and he got hit again. He flares it out. Edmonds catches it. Richardson chases him. Boris now gets in there and knocks him out. And there's a brawl going down inside the 10-yard line. Mason Rudolph and Larry Ogunjobi are going down, and the Steelers are kicking Ogunjobi in the head, and the benchers are coming off the field. Both sides are coming off the field. Marquise Pouncey was kicking Ogunjobi in the head. Well, I think he'll have next weekend off. Actually, he gets three weekends off because Pouncey is suspended for three. But what wasn't talked about right there was the fact that there was a brawl between Miles Garrett and Rudolph, Rudolph the quarterback. Now, Miles Garrett, a little bit of a late hit, 
Then they were on top of each other, and he was grabbing Miles Garrett's face mask. Miles Garrett was grabbing his face mask. Next thing you know, Miles Garrett, bigger, stronger, pulls Rudolph's ha- helmet off and then hits him with it. Luckily, didn't hit him as hard as he could, but it was not a good look. It was not a good look at all. So, Ogajobi, who was also a part of that, he got a game suspension. Pouncey got a three-game suspension. Nothing for Rudolph, who many people say, well, hold on a second. What Miles Garrett did was awful. I mean, the guy crossed the line, then he crossed another line, then he crossed another line. But this guy was also part of it, getting in his face and doing certain things. So, that, nothing for him. But Miles Garrett, on the other hand, <laughs> yes, he suspended indefinitely indefinitely it's a minimum of this season and roger goodell will have to reinstate him for next season right like he could miss time i think that they're going to want to hear that he's taking the right steps maybe they have him meet with counselors maybe they have him uh do that sort of thing but before the nfl reinstates him he's going to miss this season yeah so he's going to miss game checks Here's the thing. You know, most of the money that NFL players get is up front. So if you sign a $10 million contract, right, they guarantee $8 million or or $9 million, and it's a three-year contract, they may give you $8 million of it up front. And then they divide that over the three years, saying, well, we paid you $9 million, so we're going to put $3 million here, $3 million here, $3 million here. That's the way it would work. But he's missing time. And for players, that, that, that kills them. He was an idiot. And here's another thing. This dude was, by all accounts, off the field, a really good guy. He's had some issues, little late here, hits here and there. But, he, I mean, the fact is, it's a tough, rough, rough game. And he's getting double teamed all the time because he is a, a damn good player. He's former number one pick. Guess what? This is it. This is it for him. This is as far as what he will be remembered as. Miles Garrett is a former number one overall pick. He's got 10 sacks this season. And in the course of a matter of moments last night, he delivered an act that will define him for the rest of his NFL career. That's it. He could go on and play another five to ten years, be an all-pro, be all of these things, be an upstanding citizen, and, and there's ways of going about doing it. Where you think, okay, yeah, maybe he gets a chance to go into the Hall of Fame. Still be remembered for this, right? Ron Ron Artest, a.k.a. Meta World Peace, because he changed his name, remember? He'll only be remembered for the malice in the palace. He will never be remembered for anything else. Just the malice in the palace. That's it. This is one of those things. And the ratings were huge last night, too. They said the ratings spiked big time. Did you see? Did you see? Did you see? Miles Garrett went crazy. Did you see? Did you see? Did you see? 323 538 2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You could tweet at us, of course, today. Maria Yovanovich took center stage for the Democrats, but the Republicans hit back as they tend to do because they had their opportunity to have some say. House Democrats vowed. They would not put the American people through a wrenching impeachment process without bipartisan support. And they have none. Add that to their ever-growing list of broken promises and destructive deception. So they had 45 minutes. She comes and she gives her thing. Then, you know, uh, you get the usual, you know, Adam Schiff does his thing and then she gives her little thing, and then they all ask questions on the Democratic side. Then they took a recess, and they come back, and then, you know, they all run out and just give what they thought of that 45. And then, then what ends up happening is, you know, the Republicans, they get supposedly a chance to ask questions. I will say Schiff did not, to me, look good in some of these things. Because there was more than a few occasions when it was the Republicans' time that especially uh, Elise Stefanak, who just, he on more than a few occasions, pushed back, pushed back, 
pushback, uh, told her no, and it was uh, it was definitely one of those. Uh, there was a call. I think it was five or six times. I think she'll she'll tell you here. I think I was interrupted about six times uh, throughout the hearing. So this is just more of the ridiculous abuse of power that we're seeing from Adam Schiff. Yeah, and 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 he looked that part. That's why I said, man, wrong person to sell it to the American people. Wrong person. Wrong person to sell it to the American people. If this is what you're dreaming of removing this president and to get people on your side, this ain't the cat that should be selling anything. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. I work with an amazing, incredible organization. You know my love of animals. I love animals, right? So I've got two dogs who could never be service dogs. Uh, I've got Doodle, the blind dog who's little, who we thought was like four and finds out he's like eight and he was rescued and we don't think he speaks English and he's just grumpy all the time, but he's a sweet dog uh, when he can hear or see you. And I don't think he speaks any English, but he's sweet. And then I've got our, our, our latest gray, greatest dog, Red, who's just, he's just he's sweet, but oh, goodness me. Could never be a service dog. Wounded Paw works with service dogs. But before they're service dogs, they're shelter dogs. And they make sure that our men and women who serve our country, whether they're vets, first responders to their families, have the opportunity, because they're suffering, to get these dogs. They say, and it is an amazing motto, to save a paw is to save a life. Right now, they need help. Why? Because it's expensive. It is. Training these dogs to be what they are is expensive, and they're looking for you to help out. They don't care what it is. Extra car truck, RV, even a boat, vehicle for change. It's truly what it is. Great tax deductible gift. You're going to be saving a paw to save a life. They also take cash as well. But find out how you can get involved. It's simple and easy. Go to woundedpawproject.org woundedpawproject.org or call 844-678-4PAW That's 844-678-4729 or woundedpawproject.org Chad Benson Show. Get over it. It's time to forge a new path with your very own political cartographer, Chad. It's a race to number one at the box office this weekend. Ford hates guys like us. Ford v. Ferrari is expected to take the checkered flag, the Christian Bale, Matt Damon vehicle, looking at an opening in the $20 million range. That might be good enough to topple some angels. I run a covert group of exceptional women. The latest version of Charlie's Angels, starring Kristen Stewart, is tracking in the $15 million range. And Ian McKellen and Helen Mirren's The Good Liar probably won't crack $10 million. No, and Charlie's Angels look stupid. First one was okay, and I'm like, all right, we can move on with that now. I don't know if we need this. There's a lot of feminist stuff in here. Yeah, there's, yeah. Like, the show was fun. It was campy and fun. The first movie, all right. Second movie, eh, and I don't know if we need another one of these. But Ford versus Ferrari looks great. And it's a true story of how they took on Ferrari at Le Mans, and it's a true story of, you know, you get to find out who Carroll Shelby was. And 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 Christian Bale in this is absolutely just, it looks, it's incredible. And this is a true story of, of two guys, Ken Miles, who, by the way, everybody called him, like, at the time, like, this is the greatest race car driver in the world. This guy has no fear, which eventually cost him, but looks awesome. And if you don't know who Carroll Shelby is, if you like Mustangs, and of course, if you like the Cobra, there you go. Here's a fun story. Are you ready for this? Okay, producer Phil. Nicolas Cage is in talk to play Nicolas Cage in a movie about Nicolas Cage. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The unbearable weight of massive talent, which is uh would be the first studio movie he's made since Ghost Rider the sequel and that was 2011 <sighs> yeah so he would play Nicolas Cage and the movie is about Nicolas Cage trying to land a coveted role in the new Quentin Tarantino movie 
And then they're going to also have a position where he's trying to keep his, like, you know, his teenage daughter happy. He's an interesting character, Nicolas Cage. Because he's one of those guys, those actors that's like... One out of four, one out of five. Right? He's, he, you know what he is? I said this, uh, I was talking to somebody the other day about Nicolas Cage because I, I laugh because I'll watch a bunch of his movies. It makes me laugh. Nicolas Cage is America's version of Michael Caine. Every once in a while, you're like, you may get an Oscar nomination. And then there's going to be Jaws 4, <laughs> The Swarm. There's going to be one of those, right? Like, that's, he's our version of Michael Caine. Hello, I'm Michael Kane. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. I like it when you do. Check out the Instagram as well. I didn't put up. I had a donut today, but I didn't put it up. It's one of those days. Just busting my butt. I had a donut. Some chili at lunch. Yeah. It was it was it was freezing here today. It got almost down to like eighty. I'm like, gosh, this is this is almost socks weather. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Sir, do you believe your tweets and words can be intimidating? I don't think so at all. Are you sure? Because you tweeted something today in the middle of Yovanovitch. Now, she didn't know about it, but luckily, huh? Luckily, Adam Schiff let her know. The president is attacking you on Twitter. Um, and I'd like to give you a chance to respond. I'll read part of one of his tweets. Everywhere Marie Yovanovitch went turned bad. She started off in Somalia. How did that go? Uh, he goes on to say uh, later in the tweet, is a U.S. president's absolute right to appoint ambassadors. Okay, which is true, but they, you guys have to essentially do the vetting process, right? So he tweets out, right? And I think that's, you know, that's what Trump does, right? That's what Trump does. It's not a smart thing to do in the middle of her, but it was even worse for him to bring it up. But he wanted to make a statement about everything. What effect do you think that has on other witnesses' willingness to come forward and expose wrongdoing? Well, uh, it's very intimidating. One of those days. Another day in the presidency of Trump. I've taken away in these two days. First of all, can we just be honest? He's not going anywhere. Not at this moment in time. Not at this moment in time is he going anywhere. There's somebody right now that is behind closed doors having another hearing. And he's an aide to to Gordon Sondland, who we'll hear from next week, who's the ambassador to the EU who said some interesting stuff. Like, he said that Sondland told him, look, Trump doesn't care about the Ukraine. He cares about big things like the Bidens and investigating the Bidens. You need to get people, right? So you need to get people who are going to go, we got to get rid of Trump. But the people that have to say that are not the people that have been saying it since before he got elected. Right. And then the night he got elected and then subsequently up until he was sworn in and from the day he was sworn. Not those people. You need to get people. Who have been Trumpers, who are Trumpers to say, oh, he's got to go because of this. And you know why you're not going to do that? Besides all the bad salespeople you have doing it. And but because they feel that. No, the Bidens were bad news. All of these people are. Hillary, the Bidens, all of them, Obama, 
Right. Look at the way. He, look what he did to us. Right. You know, the gods and guns and 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 and, and Hillary calls us deplorables and and they're out there playing this game. And and look at what they've done with Don Jr. And then they'd come after him. Could you imagine if they do this? You're not going to get them to jump ship. It ain't going to happen. Thirteen million people watched it. The other day, I don't know, today, maybe eight. Who knows? Right. So you had 13 million people. Watch this. 81% of people have said they've already made up their mind on whether he's guilty or innocent. So you sit there and you say to yourself, well, well, wait a minute here. What is what what what, what happens then? Well, you're going to need 20% of the people who are Trump supporters to jump ship. It ain't happening. There would have to be some real explosive, oh my God, moments coming up. It's not going to happen. You go back to, yes, I'm going to say it. This guy called who? Nixon. If it would have been 50-50 support, there's a good chance Nixon wouldn't have gone anywhere. But it got to the point where the support for removal of him was so massive. They had no choice. Because the people who had the power to remove him answer to the people that have the power to remove them. There's no doubt in my mind if Mitch McConnell thought for a second that if he votes and has a hearing and he votes to keep Trump, and then he finds out if I vote to keep Trump, there I'm probably going to be in a lot of trouble and my constituents are saying that I, I may be removed. They, they, they may vote me out. And other Republicans are going, oh, yeah, the same thing, the same thing. You know what will happen? Oh, somehow they'll – it's not that they'll find a conscience. It's that they'll find a situation where they go, well, we got to listen to the people. we got to. No, you want to keep your job. It's about your job, your fiefdom. And right now, those people aren't clamoring for you to leave. This isn't about the removal of Trump. If you want to get Trump gone, if you want to get Trump out of there – then you better figure out how you can make it so it's a removal of the people that may keep him there. That's how you do it. And I don't think it's going to happen. Because in many of these places, they're not in any dire fear of losing their seats. Oh, there's some contested seats. You may see, you know, Mitt Romney, I think, leads with Mitt Romney. And he's not really worried. He's not running for, you know, five years. He's not going anywhere. Could he potentially be somebody? Yeah, but you're not getting 15 of them, right? Murkowski and a few other ones where it could get close and they may. But, again, you're not getting 15. And there may be a few Democrat senators who say, well, you know what? It's a red district and I've won before, so there's a good chance that I may not want to vote to remove him if and when it gets to that point in the Senate. It's just I just don't see it happening. It's more about them and less about him in this situation. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at me, Roger Stone. You guys remember him? Guess what? He is in a little bit of trouble. Just a smidge of trouble. How much? A lot, to say the least. Prosecutors in the case this week in their closing arguments pointed to the fact that he did it to protect the president, then candidate Donald Trump. A statement from the closing arguments, quote, Stone knew that if its information came out, it would likely look really bad for his longtime associate, Donald Trump. So he lied to the committee. Guilty. All seven accounts. Guilty. Guilty, guilty, guilty. That's not a good look. For Trump. It's not a helper for Trump. I know that. He looked extremely upset when he was found guilty on all seven counts. 
He faces a statutory maximum of up to 50 years in jail. His wife was sitting in front of me, hugged a family friend, and said he'll be okay. It's just not a good look. If you're Trump, this isn't a great look right here. Right? This is, and people will point to, it's yet another person associated with Trump. And this is the first one where the association with Trump has to do with stuff that actually involves Trump stuff, right? Comparatively to Manafort, they looked into Manafort based on the fact that he was involved with Trump and they were looking at all these things, but Manafort's in jail because of other things. Same thing with Cohen. Cohen's not in jail because of what he did with Trump. Cohen's in jail because he worked with Trump, but the reality is all oh, that prison sentence is because he tried to hide a lot of money. The guilt by association was part of the problem, but this is something wholly different, and this is not a good look if you're Donald Trump. You're like, oh, what? Yeah. What do you do if you're Trump? Keep doing what you're doing. But you need to get out there and you need to push. Right? You need to push some things. You need to remind the people that the economy, we got up to 28,000 today on the Dow. You need to remind the people the economy's booming. Things are rolling. I'm trying to fight for you. I'm trying to do things for you that really matter in your everyday life. All this soap opera means nothing. Talk about the economy. Talk about health care, what you're trying to do with it. President Trump's only public event today focuses on health care prices. According to reports, the president's expected to roll out new transparency rules for insurers and hospitals. In June, he signed an executive order directing the Department of Health and Human Services to develop a rule requiring transparency on prices. We will empower patients with the information they need to search for the lowest cost and the highest quality care. Yeah, that's good. Those are things that you need to remind people of. You don't need to be sitting around watching the silly stuff. This stuff matters. Stuff like this matters to the American people. Cost of care. I want to know what I'm paying before I go in. I don't want to get this surprise weird bill with 48 different things on there to find out that something that should have cost X, Y, and Z ends up costing, I mean, my God, we're second to the X, times Y, time, and you're just, no. These things, the economy Tout the economy. Get out there. Talk about the things that really you should be talking about. Talk about the good news. Talk about the winning. Because you're not going to win this right here with the media. And I understand you're fighting for your quote-unquote political life, but your base at this moment in time isn't going anywhere. So do your thing when you're trying to – because it's the It's the middle. That's going to decide this. The undecided voters that's going to decide this. So remind them while you're trying to make sure that everybody in your base smiles. Remind the people in the middle, hey, this economy, it's booming. And it's not going anywhere. And that's me. That's a me thing. Right? I'm trying to fight for health care. I'm trying to take on immigration. Maybe you don't like the way I've done it. Okay? But they didn't do it. Guy before me didn't do it. Guy before him didn't do it. I'm trying. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. So you've got a lot of credit card debt. You're sitting around. You're thinking, man, I got to get rid of some of this. What do you do? Well, you could continue to pay those high, high interest rates. 20% on average. Or... You can get with my friends over at Lightstream and save some cash. Consolidate your high interest rate credit card balances, lower rate, and save with Lightstream. How how much lower? 5.95% with auto pay, and I'm going to show you how you can even get a bigger discount with that. Your rate's going to be fixed. There's no fees. You can get your money as early as the same day. So what are you waiting for? And remember I said you're going to save even more money? How about this? Special interest rate discount. The only way to get this discount is to go to lightstream.com slash Benson. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash Benson. Subject to credit approval. Rate includes 0.50% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply. Offer subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash Benson for more information. Chad Benson Show. No 
need to fear. We promise we won't give you a noogie and make you cry Russia, Russia, Russia. Who is the fearless leader? Fui. Fui, fui, and double fui. Boy, it's your language. This is a family show, remember? Who is the family too? Nostrovia. This is Chad Benson. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? Oh, lots of stuff trending on this beautiful Friday night. Resign Trump now, trending on Twitter. Suspend Rudolph, Mason Rudolph, who got no suspension, even though a lot of people think, hey, you know what? You were a big part of that fight last night. David Holmes, who is now testifying behind closed doors. He is an aide that works with Gordon Sondland. Yovanovich, Return of the Jedi. Just a few things trending on that there. And The Mandalorian, because I think the second episode was released today. So I, I think. So that's trending. You go over to Google, a lot of interesting things trending. Lots of stuff, kid. Roger Stone. Trending big time because, of course, he was convicted. Seven account, seven counts. He faces up to 50 years. And this is lying to Congress, obstruction of witness, uh, obstruction of justice, witness tampering. I mean, there's a lot of things that he's in trouble. Hallmark movies, of course they are. Durr. Why wouldn't they be? Right? What does OK Boomer mean is trending? Because they're making fun, of course, boomers. And then... The Gen Z generation is making fun of the Gen X generation, and they call the Gen Xers Karen. <laughs> what? Yeah. So, Phil, we're called Karen by them, uh, and they say the reason is is because uh, we essentially are racist, homophobic, transphobic, don't believe in vaccines or climate change, and are mostly... Also, the parents of Gen Z children. So that's why we're 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 apparently in a battle with the Gen Zs. <laughs> what abs? What? That's right, baby. What abs? Good God! <sighs> we were talking today about like the you know just this bizarre world of 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 craziness that we live in and. Times got there, like, I guess you can vote for the people of the year uh, or the person of the year. And producer Anthony's like, it's got to be Greta, right? It's got to be Greta Thunberg, right? Is she is she going to be it? Right? So let's vote who should be person of the year, who's some of these people that you can. I don't know. Right? Is it going to be any one of these uh, uh, Justin Trudeau? No. Bob Iger? No. Elizabeth Warren? Maybe. Erdogan? Maybe. Right? And you got the usual, you know, people. But uh, I think he's right. I think it might be Greta Thunberg. Now, it could be Adam Schiff or it could be the, you know, the Democrats. Right, in the impeachment inquiry. It could be impeachment. Is that a person of the year? They've done stuff like that before. But Greta Thunberg, I could definitely see that. How dare you vote me this? You ruined my childhood. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show's your Twitter. Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. House Democrats vowed. They would not put the American people through a wrenching impeachment process without bipartisan support. 
and they have none. Add that to their ever-growing list of broken promises and destructive deception. That right there, Devin Nunez today, Maria Yovanovitch, front and center. What is she doing? She's talking about what went down, talking about all kinds of stuff. Right. Doing what she has to do. because She's already done it behind closed doors, but now's the chance for everybody to see. Do I think she's a bad woman? No. Do I think she's a never Trumper? No. I don't think she's any of those things. I think she was an ambassador and she was a diplomat and she was some of these people that are, you know, working all over the globe. I don't think she's deep state or any of that stuff. That just makes me sit back and go, ugh, when I hear stuff like that. In the end, do I think that her testimony today nails another nail into that coffin of the Trump presidency? No, because everything she's saying, we're kind of, we're already thought privy to. But it does shed light on something that I continue to say. President Trump has a Rudy Giuliani problem. Big time. Big, big, big time. Ambassador Yovanovitch did not just piss off corrupt Ukrainians, like the corrupt former prosecutor general Yuri Lutsenko, but also certain Americans, like Rudy Giuliani, Donald Trump's personal attorney, and two individuals now indicted who worked with him. Yeah, yeah. And Wall Street Journal has a report out today that Giuliani and some of his sweet folk that he worked with uh, that they were also trying to, while they're trying to get to the bottom, if you will, and get the dirt on Burisma and Bun- and Hunter Biden, that they were trying to profit also on a gas deal between the Ukraine and Poland. And then you look at Rick Perry, who was the energy secretary, And several of his backers got a massive deal in the Ukraine. The least the one thing you can say about that is those backers who got the big deal, at least they're in the oil and gas business. It's now what? Well, between all of this stuff going on, you get, yes, Adam Schiff reads it out. In the midst of all of this stuff today, Trump then decides, well... The best thing for me to do is tweet something. The president is attacking you on Twitter, um, and I'd like to give you a chance to respond. I'll read part of one of his tweets. Everywhere Marie Yovanovitch went turned bad. She started off in Somalia. How did that go? Uh, he goes on to say uh, later in the tweet, is a U.S. president's absolute right to appoint ambassadors? Which it is. And at the same time, They go through a process. But he tweets out how bad she was in all these places. Look, I don't know what kind of person she is. I don't know the lady. She's pretty upstanding to me. right? I don't think she's lying about anything. Uh, And, yeah, it is Trump's right to a point. They still have to go through a vetting process, if you will. But it's saying that. Do I think that she caused the problems in Somalia? Like, right? Like, she was it? Like, hey, I'm in Mogadishu. And because of that, Black Hawk Down. I, I do not think that. I think that is ridiculous. And it's it's just insane. It is. But the insanity doesn't stop there. Because while all of that is going on, guess what happens today in the Roger Stone trial? The jury convicted Roger Stone of all seven federal charges he faced, including obstruction, making false statements, and witness tampering. Stone, a self-described dirty trickster, had been accused of being the conduit between the Trump campaign and WikiLeaks during the 2016 election. His relationship with the president goes back decades, and his trial put a spotlight on the campaign's eagerness to obtain information about hacked Democratic emails damaging to Hillary Clinton. Yeah, that's not good. He faces some... 50 plus years in prison. I don't think he's going to get that. But it's another situation where you have surrounded yourself with people. Right? Who are now doing time. 
you surrounded yourself with people who are now, and this one is the closest to it because this had to do with the Mueller investigation. This had to do with stuff like the other people, while they were guilt by association and the things that they ended up going to jail for were stuff like tax evasion, which has nothing to do with you. You still look and go, oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. So he's going to go to jail. How long will he go to jail? That I don't know. Dan Abrams, live PD, but also a uh, legal analyst, uh, thinks that maybe, just maybe, something else may happen. It was a pretty easy case for prosecutors to prove that he was lying, that he was trying to obstruct, that he was trying to interfere with a witness testifying. And it seems that they had just kind of hoped that maybe they'd get one juror and they could hang the jury. And now you have to believe that based on the lack of defense he presented, based on the type of defense he presented, based on the fact that he didn't enter into any kind of plea deal, etc., that he's hoping for a pardon. Yeah. I would think so. I would, right? Like, when you think at this point in time that, that he would be hoping for something, right? Try to keep you out of as much as possible. You owe me. Everybody wants the you owe me scenario. You owe me some. I need this. You owe me. He looked extremely upset when he was found guilty on all seven counts. He faces a statutory maximum of up to 50 years in jail. His wife was sitting in front of me, hugged a family friend, and said he'll be okay. Yeah. So he's at least out for now on his own recognizance. What happens from there? I don't know. But that's not a good look. Like of all of the things today, for you if you're the president, seeing him potentially go to jail for a long time that's ugly that is that is ugly three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at chad benson show is your twitter you could tweet at us love hearing uh every single one of you i try to answer everybody back all the while trump's heading out to by the way to 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 louisiana because he's trying to get you know, their governor reelected. But he did talk about immigration in the wall, something that's not being talked about, but that's what he's got to start doing. And if I'm him, I'm not tweeting about this lady. I'm not talking about any of this stuff. I'm taking a page from what Clinton did, which is I'm here. I'm working for the American people. That's what I'm doing. When you when you stop down and you tweet in the middle of her testimony, you're watching this. Why are you watching this? We've launched historic and unprecedented action to secure our southern border. We have just released brand new border numbers today, showing that we have successfully reduced illegal crossings by more than 70 percent since May. And I can proudly announce that we have ended catch and release, and we are building the wall faster than anyone thought possible. My. You've not built anything. You're replacing stuff that was broken. You've not a foot. Your old guy came out and said, no, we haven't done anything. We haven't built anything. But the people are like, yeah. You're like, no, I'm telling you, we haven't done any of that. Right? And those people out there are like, the wall's mean. All the wall that's up was built long before him, and none of you seem to care about that. Yeah. Shit. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. You could tweet at us. Super Beats. Energy. I got a ton of it. I go, go, go. Thank you, Super Beats. Super Beats is awesome. I take mine every day, but at work, I like convenience, and the soft shoes they have now are are it. I don't have to do the powder, any of that stuff. Boom. Take a couple soft shoes, and away I go. Gives me all the potent heart health benefits of Super Beats, packed into what? Two convenient soft shoes. Breakthrough ingredients, brand new. Grape seed extract. Comes from Loire Valley in France, and has been clinically studied and shown to support healthy blood pressure. You, you pop a couple of these tanks, chew them, they taste delicious. Guess what? Supports normal blood pressure, circulation, and natural energy in your body. Right now, you buy two bags, you get a third one for free. How do you do it? Go to superbeatsradio.com slash chad. Superbeatsradio.com slash chad. Superbeatsradio.com slash chad. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. C-H-A-D-B-E-N-S-O-N. This is the Chad Benson Show. Go! 
Don't let the Washington Beltway strangle you. This is where the exhausted majority comes to refuel, realign, and reevaluate. This is Chad Benson. Another price hike for Hulu. Blessed be the fruit. The home of The Handmaid's Tale increasing the price of its Hulu with live TV product from 45 to 55 bucks a month, a 22% jump. After raising prices from 40 to $45 in January, Hulu with live TV gives viewers access to all of Hulu's content, plus live local channels and more than 60 cable channels. It's the number one service for cord cutters with more than 2.5 million subscribers. The move comes as Disney launches its Disney Plus streaming service, Disney controls Hulu, and is the parent company of ABC News. The price increase goes into effect next month which is weird because i think you can get a bundle package now with espn plus and hulu so that's kind of an odd thing right like that's a weird thing that you would do netflix the battle really is between netflix and disney i don't know how some of the other ones are going to do you know apple i don't know how that's going to do uh, i like hulu i've got it Jack loves it. He watches all of his shows on there. I was watching Hulu Hulu earlier today. I like Hulu. Uh, but, yeah, Netflix still is the king, right? And and we were talking the other day to a couple of people who work at Netflix, and here's one of the things. They've got first mover advantage, right? So first mover advantage is massive. When you're able to be first and you put a great product out there, They'll always be staying power. And they and they realized it's not just about rebroadcasting other people's stuff. You gotta have your own intellectual properties. And they've done that. So uh I still don't you know, I mean, I think Netflix isn't going anywhere time soon, but it's uh the fact that you're raising prices, geez. Everybody's raising prices, man. Everybody's raising prices. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. Of course, today, big day with all that stuff going on, the insanity of, yet again, more impeachment hearings. There's somebody behind the closed door right now uh, that is supposed to be somebody heard the quid pro quo. And, of course, today you had uh, Maria Yovanovitch out there. And then, you know, afterwards, everybody runs out and they have to do what they have to do, which is what, essentially? You defend your side of the aisle, and what team you're on. Adam Schiff does what Adam Schiff does. This is a part of a a pattern to intimidate witnesses, um, and it's also part of a pattern to obstruct the investigation. And that's where they pushed. Again, the whole tweet thing today that, that we talked about earlier. It's like, she wouldn't have known there was a tweet had you not said anything. Do I think it's right what he did? No, and I've said it, and I'll continue to say it. In saying that, I watched some of it today uh, early on uh, while I was doing other things, and I had a bunch of recordings to do, and, I, and, and I've rewatched a good portion of it. I think Adam Schiff at times has been as shiffy as he 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 really is. I think I was interrupted about six times uh, throughout the hearing. So this is just more of the ridiculous abuse of power that we're seeing from Adam Schiff. Yeah. And that's part of the problem with them trying to sell this to America is while there may be some stuff there that people should absolutely be looking at, the reality is, is the person selling it. Nobody trusts, right? Nobody trusts. He's as trustworthy as Lucy holding the football for Charlie Brown. That's the way a lot of people look at this. And I understand it. I don't trust him. And that's the problem I have with a lot of this, even though the stuff I trust what the people are saying far more than I trust what Adam Schiff is trying to do. To to him, they're a means to an end. They just think they're doing their job and they think they're doing their due diligence for this country. And when I hear people, oh, they're horrible people, they're never Trumpers, you know, Trump comes out and does what he does, that drives me crazy. No, I think they're actually good people who are doing the things that they think they need to do and try to represent America the best way they know how. I don't think they're liars. I don't think they're awful people. I don't think any of those things. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. Love to hear from you. Meetings are the worst. You know that. I know that. Everybody knows that. How many people know that? Everyone. 
If your work meetings are like most people's work meetings, <sighs> you might wonder why you have them at all. <sighs> According to researchers in Sweden, the whole purpose of meetings has changed over the years. See, we're no longer actually doing or making anything concrete. So meetings have evolved as more strategists, advisors, consultants, and managers get involved. Once in meetings, employees often use the time to complain and expect their complaints to be acknowledged by colleagues. One way to actually get some things done, hold meetings between equals on the management ladder. That way people can actually discuss ideas rather than simply vent. Or don't have meetings. Like, who's with that? If you're going to have a meeting, have a meeting for a reason. Look, we're here to discuss this. We're announcing this. Or we're going to come up with an idea that is going to be implemented here now. And this is it. Like, that's where the equals come in. And maybe you'll hear an idea, too. But, like, just meetings for the sake of meetings are stupid. They're not productive. They 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 just kill flow. They kill flow. Yeah, they kill flow. You know what I mean. It's ridiculous. And I've just, I've never, I never understood that. Man, I got, got have you ever worked at a place where there's just, Nothing but meetings like there's just it, that's all it seems to be. Man, I've worked at places where it is it is meeting after meeting and you start looking around. You go, wait, what the hell? How many meetings do we have to have? We're going to have a meeting about the meeting. We're going to have a meeting about the meeting. Yeah. And then there's another meeting about the meeting that we just had about the meeting with the meeting. Oh, there's one of those. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. So there's a meeting about the meeting, about the meeting, about the meeting with this meeting. Is me. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of meetings. Fantastic. And then you get out and you're like, I don't even know what we're doing anymore. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. I love hearing from every single one of you. I do on this beautiful Friday. Crazy day. Between what we talked about a little while ago with that insane football game and Miles Garrett and everybody. I to Somebody tweeted at me and said, have you ever been in a situation like that? I have been in situations where there's been fights on the field and things like that. We don't have equipment. Obviously, we we didn't. But somebody else also said, having a couple hockey players been prosecuted for the S, I think the last one was Brashear was prosecuted for the swinging of a stick. But there was a few others that have had uh, some legal issues before. Uh, And this this was, last night was just insane, though. Was just insane. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Feel free to tweet at me. What do you bet that the league had a meeting? Because, you know. But they came up with the thing because of the meeting. Chad Benson. Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. The flying, the president is attacking you on Twitter. Um, and I'd like to give you a chance to respond. I'll read part of one of his tweets. Everywhere Marie Ivanovich went turned bad. She started off in Somalia. How did that go? Uh, he goes on to say uh, later in the tweet, is a U.S. president's absolute right to appoint ambassadors? First of all, First of all, I'm going to stop you there, Mr. Schiff. Uh, She didn't know she was being uh, attacked on Twitter. And I'm going to say this. Trump asked Hattery (laughs) to even think that she had a like you. Everything was good, man. Like Somalia, Mogadishu, things were going. They were rocking. You show up next thing you know, Black Hawk down. You're like, what? No. Settle down. Settle down. To do that in the middle of her testimony is silly. Second thing, she didn't know she was getting attacked on Twitter until you brought it up, Adam Schiff. That is amazing. But that shows you the politics of all of this stuff. That shows you the politics of this insanity. Ambassador Ivanovich, the Senate has a chance to confirm or deny an ambassador, do they not? Yes, advise and consent. But would you like to respond to the president's attack that everywhere you went turned bad? Well, I... I mean, I don't, 
I don't think I have such powers, uh, not in Mogadishu, Somalia, Somalia, and not in other places. I actually think that um, where I've served over the years, um, I and others have demonstrably um, made things better. You didn't need to do it. You didn't need to attack. But he did. This is... <sighs> Why? The big question. Like, what are you doing? Right? Do I think she's credible? Yeah. Do I think she's part of some deeper evil, this is part of the deep state? No. Do I think this is some crazy witch hunt? No. I thought the Russia investigation was an absolute ridiculous thing. I did. This? This is real. Doesn't mean it's going to change anything. At all. Don't think he's going anywhere. But no, this, this, this is, this is a real thing. And by the way, the Wall Street Journal has a great piece out that they just put out a little while ago. That, and throughout this entire process, Rudy Giuliani is, is the issue. And I've been saying it. He's got a Rudy problem for months and months and months. And everybody's like, no, no, no. He's a, somebody attacked me last night. Rudy's a patriot. And one day you'll say, no, Rudy did a great thing. And I can compartmentalize that with the fact that he, yes, led New York through serious, serious, serious issues that we have never seen before in this country, not since Pearl Harbor and never in the modern times have we seen something like what took place on 9-11. We are almost 20 years removed for that, and he's got a real issue. And the Wall Street Journal is reporting that he and his little pals from the Ukraine potentially were going to do a, a gas deal while they were investigating, quote-unquote, the Bidens over a gas deal. Hmm. We continue, sir. You know, for the U.S. as well as for the countries uh, that I've served in, uh, Ukraine, for example, where there are huge challenges, including, you know, on the issue that we're discussing today of, of corruption, huge challenges. But they've made a lot of progress since 2014, including in the years that I was there. And I think in part, uh, I mean, the Ukrainian people get the most, um, the most credit for that. But a part of that credit goes to the work of the United States and... Um, and to me as the ambassador in in the United um, in Ukraine. There you go. That's what she thinks. I, I just don't get it. Why, why are you out there tweeting stuff, right? Why are you doing things like this? You don't have to. Focus on other stuff. But you don't. You don't. And this is why we're having these things. The good thing for the Republicans is you've got Adam Schiff leaving this. And because of that, we're like, eh, he's Adam Schiff. Nobody believes anything he says because, well, he's Adam Schiff. And he's been wanting this for so long. He's been searching for the crime of which he's already found the president guilty. So therein lies the problem that so many people see here. So the first 45 minutes went to the Democrats now, the you know, next 45 minutes is going to the Republicans and the questions that they're asking. And it is, you know, it is exactly what you would expect. Did you ever talk to President Trump in 2019? No, I have not. Mick Mulvaney. No, I have not. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, I'm not exactly sure uh, what the ambassador is doing here today. <laughs> well, you didn't talk to him, so nothing could have happened. Right. There's no doubt in my mind that Rudy and his little friends don't tell me that Trump didn't know that this stuff was going on and what was happening. There's no doubt in my mind. Does it rise to the level of removal? I think as they start to uncover more and more of this stuff, I think people are going to have to ask some serious questions. Some very serious questions. But there's an election next year. Do I think he's going to be removed? I do not. Do I think that we're going to find out more that's going to make people think? Absolutely. And I still think these other guys, these Furman guys and, and Lev Parnas and, and Rudy and his friends, I think they've got some answers to some questions that may help the Democrats in a real way.
then you move from that, right? All of this is going on. Then you guys remember Roger Stone, right? Roger Stone. So you've had all these other people that worked along the way with Trump and his campaign who were all in trouble, and most of it had nothing to do with actual Trump, just the association of Trump. But this is very interesting. Roger Stone today, former Trump advisor, guess what? Prosecutors in the case this week in their closing arguments pointed to the fact that he did it to protect the president, then candidate Donald Trump. A statement from the closing arguments, quote, Stone knew that if its information came out, it would likely look really bad for his longtime associate, Donald Trump. So he lied to the committee. Yeah. And because of that, guilty. How guilty? Very guilty. The jury convicted Roger Stone of all seven federal charges he faced, including obstruction, making false statements, and witness tampering. Stone, a self-described dirty trickster, had been accused of being the conduit between the Trump campaign and WikiLeaks during the 2016 election. His relationship with the president goes back decades, and his trial put a spotlight on the campaign's eagerness to obtain information about hacked Democratic emails damaging to Hillary Clinton. Yeah. That's real. Seven. He faces 55 years, I believe, in prison. He's not going to do that. He's 68, 69 years old. He's not going to jail. They released him on his own recognizance today. He's going to have to stay at his house, and they'll go from there. But he faces some serious time for witness tampering, obstruction, lying to Congress, go on and on. Not a good look. Not a good look at all. And he's not thrilled uh, by any of this stuff. He looked extremely upset when he was found guilty on all seven counts. He faces a statutory maximum of up to 50 years in jail. His wife was sitting in front of me, hugged a family friend, and said, he'll be okay. Yeah. Just telling you, I said to somebody yesterday, you know, like when they bring up the old Epstein thing, and everybody's like, oh, Chad, that's just silly. Let me tell you something. Donald Trump has a lot of people he's associated with that spends a lot of time in jail and or are, are living on the nefarious edge of society. And the Clintons have way too many people in their lives that mysteriously pass away. Jeffrey Epstein's estate wants to compensate his accusers if they forego their sexual misconduct lawsuits. According to court documents filed Thursday in the U.S. Virgin Islands, the program would offer victims compassion, dignity and respect with a confidential payout. The program would be managed by New York City-based attorney Jordana Feldman, along with Kenneth Feinberg. There are 12 suits pending in New York alone. Two days before he died, Epstein signed a will which valued his estate at $577 million, $56 million of that in cash. If approved, payments could start early next year. Well, what would you do? Would you take it and bounce? Probably. I mean, you're not going to get anything out of him. He's not going to jail. He's dead. No matter how he died, that doesn't change, right? Like, death by suicide or death by murder, murder, you're not going to get anything else. So you'd be stupid to say no. Take the money and get on with your life, right? But it is funny, right? Like, Trump's friends all go to jail, and everybody's associated at some point in time with the Clintons end up mysteriously passing away i've never seen so many people get robbed or die by suicide or (laughs) just throwing it out there 323-538-2423 at chad menton shows your twitter feel free to tweet at me so much stuff to get to including an absolute insane football game ending last night that had nothing to do with game and had all to do with insanity and violence and the verdict has been handed out by the perpetrator of the worst part of it last night. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at me. Raycon, amazing. Christmas time is here. They've got some amazing, incredible deals on earbuds and headphones. And I will tell you this right now. The E25 earphones are amazing. It's their best one yet. Six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that's going to give you a nice noise-isolating fit. So that means, guess what? On-the-go listening is incredible. Great for taking phone calls. Stylish. No dangling wires. No stems. You're going to absolutely love them. Ray J went to all of his friends when he put this together and said, hey, try this out. People like Snoop Dogg, Cardi B, guess what? They're obsessed with Raycons. Now's the time. See what the hype's about. To hear what the hype's about. Half the price of all of these other things that are out there. you got to get this and you got to get that. I was watching somebody yesterday uh, from the Wu-Tang Clan. 
And uh, he was talking about the fact that, you know, people spend all this money on headphones and they're not even worth it. Yeah, these are worth it. Half the price, better sounding, 15% off right now. Go to buyraycon.com slash Chad, buyraycon.com slash Chad, buyraycon.com slash Chad. Chad Benson Show. One Mexican heartburn. Why don't you mugs grow up? The Chad Benson Show, where independent a la carte thinkers have a seat at the table and a voice in the dialogue. I'll have what she's having. This is Chad Benson. There's a mystery here today on scene, and it revolves around the alleged shooter's social media profile. Detectives say there was a post on his Instagram account made before the shooting. August, have fun at school tomorrow. But L.A. County Sheriff's Captain Kent Wagner says somebody changed that message after the shooting. Which means there is somebody else that has access to this account. Who modified the Instagram account after the shooting isn't clear. Yeah. So there's that. They're looking at a lot of different things. Uh, everybody's in the hospital seems to be recovering, but too dead and, you know, still trying to piece together stuff. And we're finding out more and more about who this shooter was. We know the alleged shooter's father died about two years ago of a heart attack. If that played a role in his son's downward spiral isn't clear. Detectives say they're working on a motive. They say it took only 16 seconds for the boy to pull out the gun shoot his victims, and then shoot himself. Yeah, and, you know, as Alex Stone's reporting on that, the, everybody they have seemed to have talked to that that had classes with him, turns all his stuff in, works, quiet, but very nice, respectful, Boy Scout, helps people out. So somewhere along the line, something happened. What that was, don't know. Do not know. Did he have mental difficulties? Is there Was there other people involved? Uh, it's, it's, you know, this is another one of those situations where they're going to dig and dig and dig, but at least to this point, doesn't seem to be, you know, like I said, somebody changed his Instagram or that Instagram they think is associated with him. His dad died. Well, my dad died when I was 16, but never died. I said, Hey, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to school and shoot a bunch of people randomly. It's just never crossed my mind. And I had access to guns. So just it's somewhere something happened. Maybe it's because he did really well in school because I didn't. 323 at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. You can tweet at me uh, just again. Today is one of those situations where. As you listen to Marie Yovanovitch, the former ambassador to the Ukraine, you've got caught up in all of this. It's the second of what will be several days of hearings in the impeachment inquiry. And I'm telling you, the Rudy problem is rearing its ugly head over and over again. And he is the one that seems to be the connect the dots scenario of oops, Trump, what did you do? What was he doing? And you may have plausible deniability saying, Hey, look, I didn't tell him to do this stuff. He took a lot of this stuff, uh, you know, on his own and ran with it. That's a possibility, but you knew. You had to have known. Rudy Giuliani has made no secret of his desire to get Ukraine to open investigations into the Bidens, as well as a conspiracy theory of Ukrainian interference in the 2016 election. Yeah. He is, he's doing something. And I know people, he's a hero. Look, what he did for New York was amazing. I'm not going to, just, you can't. How he led New York through that, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna downplay any of that. But he's got some serious issues, and the people that he surrounded himself with. So you think about this for a second. If you're sitting in jail right now, with the, looking at potentially years of prison time, and you have the get out of jail free card, where you could go right first one in gets the best deal, and you're some of these, you know, these these hanger on nefarious characters, and you have the opportunity to go in. And lay out some dirt, especially for somebody who's distancing himself, the president, from these guys. That's 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 a serious thing that Trump and them need to look at. I don't think any of this stuff that's going on and that we're going to see in the public 
is going to be earth-shattering that we didn't already know or didn't already think about, right? But I do think there may be an unknown out there. And to me, it's Giuliani and a couple others. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. It was the nastiest, gnarliest, craziest fight I've ever seen on an actual football NFL game. It was nuts. Big time. Huge. We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about Gen Z versus Gen X. What have we done? Because now they got a nickname for the Gen Xers. It's the Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. It was a pretty easy case for prosecutors to prove that he was lying, that he was trying to obstruct, that he was trying to interfere with a witness testifying. And it seems that they had just kind of hoped that maybe they'd get one juror and they could hang the jury. And now you have to believe that based on the lack of defense he presented, based on the type of defense he presented, based on the fact that he didn't enter into any kind of plea deal, etc., that he's hoping for a pardon. Yeah, Roger Stone, guilty, seven counts faces 50 plus years in prison for obstruction lying all of this based on wiki and the whole russia investigation so he's got some serious uh issues and uh another person associated with trump in trouble and by the way here's a guy who has what a tattoo of nixon on his back ironic to say the least 323-538-2423 at chad benson show is your twitter you can tweet at us so last night watching uh the nfl game browns right supposed to be great this year and they they've been anything but they've been a great disappointment to many uh the steelers started the year they lost uh two of their best weapons and then ben roethlisberger goes down and so it looked like a lost year but they were playing hanging tough and and lo and behold, they're in Cleveland. There's a rivalry there. Next thing you know, end of the game, Browns up 21-7. to They've won the game. And he takes the snap with 14 seconds to go. And he got hit again. He flares it out. Edmonds catches it. Richardson chases him. Burris now gets in there and knocks him out. And there's a brawl going oh, yeah. down inside the 10-yard line. Mason Rudolph and Larry Ogunjobi are going down, and the Steelers oh. are kicking oh, Ogunjobi man. in the head, and the benchers are coming off the field. Both sides are coming off the field. Marquise Pouncey was kicking Ogunjobi in the head. Well, I think he'll have next weekend off. Actually, Pouncey's going to have three, three weekends off. Three weekends but he wasn't the worst offense. No, no, no. The worst offender was a guy named Miles Garrett, who, for all intents and purposes, is a good dude. One of the better players in the NFL. But he got into it with Mason Rudolph, the quarterback. And he took Rudolph's head, uh, uh, his helmet off, then swung it at his head and hit him. Now, Mason Rudolph is coming back from a concussion. About four weeks ago, he got hit so hard that when you watch the replay, you could tell he's out long before he hits the ground. You could see his eyes roll back in his head. So people were asking, how long is it going to take? How long is it going to take? How long is this thing going to take before the NFL comes down? What's the suspension going to be? Pouncey, three games. Oga Bajogi, the guy that got kicked on the ground and everything because he was part of the melee and the frenzy. He got one, but Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett the main instigator of this whole situation has been suspended indefinitely and basically will not be allowed to play again this season. Even if the Cleveland Browns go to the postseason, Miles Garrett no longer will be a part of it for his role in last night's melee in Cleveland. His season is finished. It is over. Yeah. 
It is. Rightly so. What took place last night was awful. It was absolutely, that was not, I mean, how bad was it? It led, I walked in today, so we've got, here is Maria Yovanovitch. The fourth time in history this has happened where we're going through an impeachment inquiry on a sitting president where we're looking to potentially remove him from office. She's, quote, unquote, one of the star witnesses or whatever. All this stuff going on. The news people, did you see it? Was that the most insane thing you'd ever seen? Was that just nuts? Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was ugly, and that's being kind. It was absolutely ugly. If that happens in the street, you go to jail. Right? You go to jail. And when you get somebody like Baker Mayfield, who is essentially the last person that you think should be a voice of reason, coming out and being a voice of reason, well, then that's that's not good. That's not good. It is ugly, though. Miles Garrett, last night. That is embarrassing. What I did was more foolish, and I shouldn't have allowed myself to to slip like that. That's out of character, but... um, situation like that where you know it's an emotional game like Larry said and uh allow myself to to fall into those emotions you know with that the last thing and what happened yeah well now you are not going to be in the NFL for the foreseeable future so that'll be very interesting to see when he comes back I said today I wouldn't be surprised if they suspended him from the rest of this season through the playoffs and give him four games next year Because he's not done anything before. But understand where the NFL is coming from. Over the this has happened one other time when there was an incident like this. And I know it was against Richie Incognito. And if that name sounds familiar, he's the guy that was with the Dolphins who bullied the other player and he was suspended for a while. And Richie's been known to be dirty. He's model citizen now, and he's with the Raiders, and they say he's a leader and he's and he's changed his ways. But Richie, when that happened to him and he got hit, people were like, well, it's Richie Incognito, so he probably kind of deserved it. (laughs) That's kind of the way they looked at it. But we're at a different time in the NFL. The NFL is trying to do what? Clean up its act. Say, hey, look, this violent game, you don't have to worry about your head. they're, They're seeing youth sports numbers crumble when it comes to them. Kids aren't playing it anymore. Parents are keeping them out. And you've got different studies that have come out over the last couple weeks that have said, hey, it's not as violent as you think it is. It's not really doing anything in your brain the way you think. They're, 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 they're saying we're looking at stuff that says that you are you are in no better or worse shape for playing you know, violent sports, tackle football, ice hockey, and these kind of things. Uh, than you would as far as a risk for dementia and some of these other things, as you would for, you know, just being in a normal day-to-day thing where you maybe never play a sport like that. But the NFL has settled massive lawsuits, and they're trying to say, hey, look, you know, we care. And you swing a helmet at another man's head who just came back from a massive concussion that you had to send a message, and you did. And again... When you look at this, look at it in a bigger context of ugly PR for the league when you are in a situation where you're trying to make sure that you show that we care and that this is the most important thing in our game right now is the safety of the players, especially when you're looking at dwindling numbers in youth sports. The new National Health Statistics National Health reports released by the CDC shows between 2010 and 2016, almost one in seven emergency room visits among youth athletes was due to football, about 14%. Of the injured football players, 28% were due to strains, sprains, and dislocations, mostly among players 10 and older. For the younger players, 5 to 9, open wounds were the top injury. Football youth sports injuries were followed up by basketball, biking, soccer, skating, and skateboarding. Yeah. But still... Those things, you could say, well, you know, kids are going to cut themselves, they're going to hit themselves, they're going to hurt themselves. These kind of things can happen. And But the concussion things. Mom, mom's not worried about whether or not you break your arm. 
right? Because you could break your arm riding your bike to school. You could break your arm doing stupid things like playing in the tree. Well, not too many kids anymore because they don't do those kind of things because, you know. But, you know, being out doing things, you break your arm just doing stupid stuff, right? Going down the stairs. So playing football or soccer or some of these things, that, that, those are inherent risks that, you know, mom's okay with, dad's okay with. Dane Bramage, nobody wants any of that, right? They don't want any of that. Last night, that was an ugly, ugly, ugly look. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Oh, my goodness me. Maria Ivanovich on the stand, I guess you would call it, in the stand, because she is, for all intents and purposes, uh, a witness. Can I get a witness? When it comes to what's went on at the Ukraine and the whole nine yards and they're grilling her and doing what they're, you know, the Republicans are doing what they're doing, which is they're they're painting a defense for the American people, for the president and his actions that he didn't do anything wrong. And the Democrats are saying you did a ton of things wrong. And so did Giuliani. And they did it all at your, you know, uh, at your order. They they've done all of these things. And, you know, they're going to say, well, she's a never Trumper and she's this, that and the other. Also untrue are unsourced allegations that I told unidentified embassy employees or Ukrainian officials that President Trump's orders should be ignored because he was going to be impeached or for any other reason. I did not. And I would not say such a thing. So. That's how they're going to approach it going to go over here and say, look at this. Look how bad this person is. This person's a horrible person, never Trumper, you know, worked with Obama and is part of the deep state and the whole nine yards. And the other people are like, no, she's anything but she's, you know, she's been a she's worked for 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 our country for 33 years. And by all accounts, she has been a model. Represent representative of the United States. So, no. But does it matter? That's the question that. People, you know, I asked somebody who's a congressperson the other day and they didn't want to give me an answer because I don't think here's the answer that that that, that's the real answer when it comes to is there anything that would cause somebody who's a Republican to say, all right. There's so much information here. There's so much that you could look at and say, you have to go. You, you, you've, what you've done is exceeded Nixon, and you, you just you, you have to go. This is corruption. This is, this is insane. And he didn't want to give me an answer. But he said, well, the American people let us know. And that's the answer that's real. It's not whether or not a Republican – or Democrat, thinks he did or didn't do anything that rises to the level of impeachment. It's whether or not the American people feel that way to the point where they put so much pressure on our elected representatives, right, our officials out there, our senators, that if you don't do this, you're as guilty as them and we'll vote you out. So it's not whether or not there is real crimes or issues that rise to the level of high crimes and misdemeanors and that the president has done, thing, done something so wrong. It all has to do with whether or not the American people, in particular the Republicans and the Trump supporters, feel that he's crossed the line of which he must go, and they put that pressure on the likes of Mitch McConnell, and it's got to be like a Mitch McConnell and a, a Graham to get them to sway. Because you and I both know they all love power so much. If Mitch McConnell thought, oh, I'm going to uh, I'll vote to keep the president in line. But that vote would cost him his job. You bet your candy ass he'll vote the other way if it means keeping his job. Three, two, three, five, three, eight, twenty four, twenty three. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter slept amazing last night. Thank you. My pillow finally home after several days of traveling. And guess what? Out like a light. I I, I, the minute the game finished, I was like, "Woo, boom, night night." Thank you.
MyPillow is amazing, incredible company. They've backed my show from the beginning, and they're saying thank you to all listeners. Right now, they've got the buy one, get one free back. Buy one MyPillow, get a second one for free, a 60-day money-back guarantee, right, and 10-year warranty. But on top of that, huge discounts, deep discounts on everything, MyPillows, mattress toppers, bed sheets, so much more. Now is your chance to jump in and grab some of these great deals. You go to MyPillow.com, click on the new radio listener special tab, enter promo code BENSON, you're going to get deep discounts on everything. And again, the buy one, get one free is going on right now. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. MyPillow.com, promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show, where the sensible center hangs out. Hey, you. That doesn't mean you can put your feet up on the table. You're just despicable. This is Chad Benson. It's a race to number one at the box office this weekend. Ford hates guys like us. Ford v. Ferrari is expected to take the checkered flag, the Christian Bale, Matt Damon vehicle, looking at an opening in the $20 million range. That might be good enough to topple some angels. I run a covert group of exceptional women. The latest version of Charlie's Angels, starring Kristen Stewart, is tracking in the $15 million range. And Ian McKellen and Helen Mirren's The Good Liar probably won't crack 10 million nope because nope just because doesn't look good charlie's angels i have no desire to see that but ford versus ferrari i absolutely do want to see that so the great carol shelby is gonna build a car to beat ferrari with a ford correct and how long did you tell them you needed two or three hundred years 90 days (laughs) yeah Yeah, he passed away 2012, and this is one of the stories being told about him. And, of course, race car driver, I mean, I mean, automotive designer and best known for what? The Mustang and the Cobra. Love the Cobra. People always ask, like, if you could have your dream car, like one dream car, it's not a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or a Bentley or any of that, you know, stuff like that. I'd take a Cobra every day of the week. So one of the few things where I'd like, man. That, that right there, that right there is, there's something about that car. So, but this looks really good. And what they did and how they took on, you know, Ferrari, essentially with a Ford. So I'd go see that for sure. Matt Damon, Christian Bale, looks really good. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. You can tweet at us. Oh, my goodness, people. Let me ask you a question, all right? I do got a dog you're looking at your dog saying i'd like to make your life a little bit better how do we do that simple wanted ten thousand dogs by the scientists at the university of washington school of medicine for the largest ever study on aging in canines that could help gauge human longevity the study will analyze dna samples vet records and gut microbes 500 pups will test a pill that could slow the aging process why dogs they share the same environment as people but age faster the study officially launched Thursday, will take five years, and cost $23 million, paid for by the Institute of Aging. There you go. So now we're going to see if our dog can live longer. We're going to have dog cream on TV soon. Does your dog turning white? Does your dog need have some wrinkles? Like, my dog's a Sharpay. I should hope my dog has wrinkles. All right, well, here you go. And then they're going to give you something funny about that. I, like, I have a dog named Doodle who's who's a disaster. He's blind we rescued him you know we got him from one of the rescues and he's just he's not the sharpest tool in the shed we always joke because i don't think he speaks english because that's what we, i don't think he does but he's blind and deaf you can come in the house and be there for 10 minutes but what, what's going on i could use some help with his aging i'm just throwing it out there we could definitely do that 323-538-2423 at chad benson show is your twitter oh Music.
This is The Chad Benson Show.